Listen, it does not need to be a new year, a new you. It just needs to be a new year, a healthier you. Because sure, okay, they trying to take us down at every front. So get some TLC products and up that metabolism and up that energy and up that immune system, okay? That digestive system. Get that all together with these TLC products right here. And don't forget, okay, sign up for ifyoucanmove.com and become a part of the online gym and share the pounds, honey. We're starting a new challenge on January 3rd and I would love to see y'all there. Get the links down below. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for the Bell Collective. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into it. So, Latrice is on the phone with her business partner talking about expanding the hair business when her husband Cliff comes in. I really love Latrice's bedroom, you guys. I was actually quite obsessed and rewind it just so I can look at it again. It gave me such peaceful um, and serene vibes. Like, really, really loved her bedroom. Um, but yes. Cliff comes in and they get into this discussion about him wanting to invest in her business. The problem is that she does not want him to invest if it's going to feel as if he's trying to take over her business. This is something she's done for herself and she does not want to feel as if she does not have, you know, license or equity in her own business just because she's allowed her husband to invest. It's very obvious that in their relationship, there is a lack of equality. She doesn't feel equal when she has to actually express to him that she wants to feel equal, which means you don't really listen to her opinions as it pertains to everything else, which is why her business is so important. He says he will just be an investor, but I probably would not have done this. I don't know why it was necessary. You seem to be doing well. You didn't really seem to need another investor. So I don't know why you needed to mix the business with the pleasure when obviously he already takes control on a whole bunch of, you know, other levels. You should have kept that separate as far as I'm concerned. But you know what? That's their marriage. Let them people do whatever they're going to do. Tambra and Letitia meet up so that they can talk about how the girls ruined her brunch and she didn't even get a chance to announce Ferris Street and everything she's trying to do. And I'm like, that's because you should have started with that instead of with the affirmations. I understand what you were trying to do, but at the end of the day, we are all grown ass business women. We can do our affirmations in the mirror in the morning before we go somewhere, not when we get there. So you should have started off with the business and did all the fun shit later as far as I'm concerned. So you handled it wrong from the jump, okay? But Tambra is having a little birthday party and she's gonna invite all the girls. You guys, I don't know why Tambra has to look like a cartoon character. Like, she's already like a little bitty cute thing and then she has to have like five bundles in her hair. It's too much damn hair, y'all. And then the light, light colored lipstick, I'm not a fan of that, y'all, I'm sorry. I like pigmented colors on people's lips. I don't like when people's lips are lighter than their skin tone. Um, you know, like in the pigment, you know what I'm saying? Like it, I just, I was not a fan of that color on her lips. And I just, I was like, oh my God, please get it off. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just kept looking at it. I'm sorry, that's how I felt about it. Anyway, so Marie talks to her business partner because everybody has business partners out this bitch. And she complains about her life. While at the same time, you know, I guess throwing it in our faces is something that she's so happy with. I was confused about whatever Marie is going through. But apparently Marie not only takes care of her own children, but she takes care of the three children that belong to her oldest son. That I think he's the oldest son. He's a teenager or something like that. Or maybe he's an adult child. I can't remember. Either way, I feel like he got three kids he should be taking care of. You shouldn't be taking care of him. You shouldn't be taking care of his baby mama and all of that. I understand when you have the money wanting to take care of family so that they don't struggle. I get that. And I do feel like Maria is doing that out of the kindness of her heart, even if she does come off like, you know, kind of a rude bitch a tad bit. But I do feel like it's probably because she's so sensitive and does have a big heart in certain areas of her life. But what I'm going to say is that it is a complete, complete mistake to assume responsibility for your son's three children as if he is not able-bodied. See, this is, this is, listen, 
listen, you don't get to like go and pursue your career and be a football player or a basketball player, or whatever the hell her son is doing. You don't get to go and do that and act as if you don't have any kids because girls can't do that when they have kids. Okay. Um, obviously your mammy can't do that now that you've had kids. So I'm just taken aback by her taking on responsibility for all of these kids like this. Cause to me, it just teaches your son that he doesn't have to do anything. He can just rely on you his whole damn life. Then Marie starts talking about the brunch and the situation with Latrice. And she makes it seem as if Latrice attacked her. It's like, no bitch, you got loud with Latrice at a table full of potential clients and made her product look like garbage. You could have had a conversation with her uh, customer support line like she asked you to. Okay, my office hours are from nine to five. Bitch, you could have did a lot of things, but you did not handle that right. And for you to sit up here and tell your business partner who's just gonna, you know, co-sign your bullshit that she attacked you, girl, you did ass wrong then she gonna put them shoes on her you know she's so proud of them red louboutins listen y'all i like having nice shit too and i would be proud of my nice shit too but there is a certain level of it to which bitch how many red bottoms have we seen is it really still all of that like i, I don't want them so even if i could afford to buy them i don't think i would want them they look uncomfortable but the point still remains that i'm still looking at her like you real excited about having red bottoms like you just super duper excited like it's something new or something like that but either way you know the way she kicked them feet on top of her desk and said that when she gets to Tambra's birthday party she gonna let Latrice know about herself okay she'll never insult another woman like she did her and I'm just kind of like so you gonna go to Tambra event and act a fool is that what we're to understand okay so Letitia goes to meet with the Ferry Street liaison I can't remember whether the name the lady's name was Miss Dorothy or Miss Dolores child but either way they walk up and down the street and discuss some of the landmarks. Peaches Cafe where uh, Senator Obama would come and eat. And there was another spot that was like a pal called Palace something, I can't remember. But it was a large building where they would have like a concert hall. You know, uh, Duke Ellington played there and a whole bunch of other distinguished musicians, okay? So I enjoyed the history lesson of it all. I love stuff like this. It reminds me that segregation was actually a good time for a lot of black people financially because we were able to have our own. Um, but you know, white people always won't come and burn some shit down or, you know, put crack in the area and fuck it all up for everybody. Um, but <laughs> I mean, there are other issues, of course. Um, but ultimately, it's always a sad story because I, I feel like it always just goes to how over time they just redline the shit out of black people or just make it hard for them to survive by putting up Walmarts and Targets and shit in places where you would normally have went to a mom and pop store. So Latrice goes over to Antoinette's newly renovated house. She has gotten rid of everything that reminds her of her ex-husband. Um, I do appreciate Latrice bringing a gift, but it was kind of like a housewarming situation. So why are you showing up with samples of your hair? Hair products when you know you're just gonna end up giving them to me or I'm gonna end up buying them anyway you could have actually bought me a real gift but you know what never mind I'm gonna let it go so uh she found some of her ex-husband's things around the house baseball bats helmets I guess her ex-husband was into baseball so now she's gonna take this box out to the field and use it as a symbolic way of letting go of her issues and her past with her ex-husband and she gives Latrice the real reason that she and her husband broke up. It seems as if he really wanted children immediately and she wanted to work on her career. She wasn't like the rest of them girls that was in college to find a man, okay? Because they met in college. You would think that a man would understand that if a woman is in college, she obviously wants to do something with her life instead of just becoming, you know, a bed wench that stays at home and cooks and cleans and has babies for your ass. Um, but... I guess because he's a white man that never entered his mind. Uh, so yeah, their relationship didn't work out because she didn't want to give up going to dentistry school so that she could, you know, have babies for him back to back like it would have required. So that's what happened with that. Tambra goes shopping with her stylist, Ken, um, to shop for her two different birthday parties. One she's having with family, the other she's having with friends or the reality show birthday party, <laughs> okay? And she talks about how her parents are always putting pressure on her to settle down. Child, I could not believe that she was talking to us like she was a 20-something-year-old woman or even a 30-something-year-old woman. You are 40 years old. 
There is no way in hell that you should still feel pressure from your parents to do anything. They can say all that they want to say. That doesn't mean it holds any weight. You know, my parents want me to have a family. That's because that's what they have. Bitch, you 40 years old. You know, already froze your eggs. It'll happen whenever you're ready for it to happen. You take care of your damn self. You make your own money. You're working on your career. Okay, then that's what you need to do and stop worrying about what your parents want you to do. Like, I don't have time for peer pressure from your damn parents. Like, I don't have, I, I don't have time for that shit. Like, you 40 years old, Tambra. Like, why is that even something that's a part of your storyline at this point? And then she throws it out there that a uh, NBA player wanted to pay her a million dollars to have a baby with her. I was just kind of like, that's random. That's really weird. And I feel like you're bucked up about it, but yeah, nah. And she's like, I wasn't going to give up my morals for a million dollars. I can make my own million dollars. And I'm like, yeah, you can. But why are you throwing this story out there? Like, nobody needed to This is random. Nobody needs to know that. Like, what you trying to say? Like, you know, just because I don't have kids doesn't mean I'm not desirable. Because somebody wanted to pay me to have kids. Like, girl, calm down. Anyway, so Antoinette meets with her friend, Kayline. That's her little white friend. That's her real best friend, seemingly, okay? Um, because they've been friends since college. And they meet out on the field to hit the bat. And, you know, if she gonna hit the bat, she really gotta let the relationship go. She talks about not, you know, wanting to have kids because she didn't want the kids to deal with choosing a side, you know, being mixed and all. I just kind of feel like that's weird to me that you didn't want to have kids with the man that you married, not just because of your career, but also because you didn't want to have mixed kids. So why do you seek out white men? Never mind. I, I don't even want to get into the conversation. I'm sure we'll delve deep, deeper into it as we get into the season. But she does feel like somewhat of a nobody without her husband. I'm like, you're like a 20 something. Isn't she in her 20s or her early 30s? Either way, like you're a young woman with your own dentistry practice and you're about to open a whole new one. Like you're not a nobody. You're not a nobody. Like, don't even think that about yourself. A man does not define you, especially when you decided to not stay married to him so that you can keep your own agency so that he would not become your sole definition. Because that's what happens when you give up your career so that you can be somebody's wife and mother. Like, you no longer have real identity until after those responsibilities have taken a back seat. Like, that's usually how it is. So if you want to wait and find a person that's happy with having kids with you when you're in a better place in your career for that then that's what you should do. So she hit the ball and, you know, her friend is there for her. It's a beautiful moment. Moving on. So Tambra's party. Latrice shows up with her whole little entourage. Her husband is there. Her friend is there. Okay. Latrice brings up the way Marie came at her at the brunch and says that she should have called customer service. Once again, my office hours are from nine to five. Antoinette asked Letitia what, or Letitia, whatever her name is, uh, Letitia, I think it is, ask her what Marie does for a living because don't nobody know her. And Letitia was like, you not fitting to play with my friend like that. So check yourself before you wreck yourself and pull your wig forward. Don't worry about what my friend do for a living. But she tells her, you know, what business that she's in. Just because she's not a socialite doesn't mean she doesn't have money. I'm talking about what she do for a living, bitch. What do you do for her? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That was some shade, Antoinette. But I understand you was trying to have your friend back, but she didn't look like she needed the help. After they go back and forth for a few minutes, uh, Cliff was like, yeah, that's enough of this shit and I was grateful for that but I also felt like why is he here <laughs> like I was like why is he here so y'all Marie and her business partner get there and she got on this tight ass jumpsuit that she's barely fitting into her ass doesn't look real um then she ignores Latrice I thought she was gonna check her what happened to that I almost feel like when she saw her with all her people, she decided not to engage. And now you want to just, I'm going to take the high road. This isn't the time. Like, girl, please. It wasn't the time at that brunch neither, but you did it then. She said that's why she decided not to do that because the brunch, you know, turned out to be so bad. She didn't want to go through that again. I said, okay, I don't know when you learned that lesson. Because <laughs> that's not what you said the last time we talked to you. Leticia asked if Marie will have a conversation with Latrice. And Marie says, she's not a boss. It's like, you don't think she a boss? <laughs> she own her own business, bitch. That's what a boss mean. Like, I own my own business. I employ people. Like, what are we, we arguing about a fact for? Then Tambra shows up with a motorcade and security. She said, you know, that's how we get around Mississippi. Is Really, you need a motorcade to get around Mississippi, bitch? Why? 
Are you hiding something in your weave? Like what's happening here? I'm so confused. She comes in, whose birthday is it? Mine, oh my God. I was just so annoyed. <laughs> I was so annoyed at all of the squealing she was doing, okay? All of that damn hair, y'all. Then Latrice pulls up a chair to uh, the table that Maria and Letitia are sitting at, okay? Mainly her friend Melanie was making her do it, but she goes over to the table and sits down, right? And they're trying to see if they can have a conversation. Marie says, this isn't the time or the place. I want to keep it about Tambra, so I don't want to talk about this, you know? And he's like, okay, fine. Well, let's toast to, you know, everybody keeping it cute and enjoying Tambra's party. Let's toast to that. Marie didn't want to toast. She said in the confessional, I don't want to be fake. I don't want to toast to Latrice. What I'm doing that for? Baby, I'm going to need for you to get some of that hate out your system. I'm really going to need for you to do a detox and do a prep and get some of that hate out your system. Because I don't know what this girl done did to you, but you coming off like she fucked your man or something. Like, I don't know what the problem is, but you have a deep rooted issue with Latrice for seemingly no damn reason at all. You couldn't toast, bitch. Talking about, you know how I am, friend. I'm not about to be fake. Well, what are you doing by acting as if you don't have an issue with her? Like, we could toast and move on. You're not toasting to her. You toasting to y'all not getting into it tonight and making it be about Tambra, bitch. Toast to Tambra, bitch. Okay? Like, I just kind of felt like it was a nasty attitude for no reason. And listen, Letitia is very serious about getting this situation together for Ferris Street. So she tells Marie, listen, you my friend and I really respect how you feel. Feel, I do, but listen, you can't be out here looking like the villain. You gotta be the bigger person, okay? You are building something that your children's children gonna be able to eat off and nobody can be able to say nothing about you. So you gonna have to be the bigger person in this situation. You know what I'm saying? And talk to the girl, she won't talk, hear her out. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's really about women's empowerment. You know what I'm saying? And I love Letitia for this cause I feel like she basically talked this bitch into acting like she had some sense without telling her bitch, I wish you would act like you had some damn sense. Like she like Martin Luther King speech this bitch into <laughs> being a bigger person. <laughs> I was so here for it. I'm not even gonna lie. Cause I was like, she went in and she did what she had to do because after attitudes and mindsets will slightly change. They may not see it for each other, but at the end of the day, the door is open. The door is not closed, okay? I just think Marie is messy and a hater and unhappy with her home life. So she acts out in other ways. You know what I'm saying? Like you feel all the responsibility and all the way to your household. So when you go out to the street, you got to be a bad bitch and all this type of shit and being extra aggy and, and problematic and confrontational for no damn reason because you unhappy. People who are unhappy innately with themselves really do, know, do not know how to act with other people as if they're okay. Okay, like they, they, especially if they don't like them. I don't know what that's about. But, you know, happy people don't even let the people they don't like bother them this much. <laughs> so I just want Marie to get her life together, y'all. But Tamra comes out and gives her a little speech about women's empower me. And then everybody has a good time. And Latrice was like, I hear all of this talk about women's empowerment and I ain't seen shit. I'm like, well, bitch, it's only episode two. Wait on it. <laughs> anyway, you guys, uh, please don't forget to come back, like, comment, and subscribe. Tomorrow, I will be doing a live at 12 p.m. in the afternoon central time. And we're going to talk about salt and pepper movie. And we're going to talk about a few other things, okay? So I hope to see y'all tomorrow here on Bondi Blue Channel on live. All right? Love y'all. See y'all in the next.